crazy. Okay. So... Welcome to our top 10. These are, in, in the opinion of Luke and I, combined, uh, you know, in terms of our combined list. Th uh, to, to be clear, this is not our, like, it's not my top 10. This is not Luke's top 10. This is, what we did was we both made top 100, and we just smushed them together, averaging out the different places. So, like, if I had a game high, Luke had a game low, it kind of landed in the middle. These are games that were high on both our lists for, for any particular reason, and we just, they just kind of fell in there. We're, you know, we kind of slotted in there. This is the top 10. We love all of these games to one extent or another. Let yeah. us get started with the top 10. So, number 10. And you can have this one. I don't own it anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> because I have not got the... I didn't have the expansion. The expansion mm. wasn't released when I had this. And then I played it again with the expansion, and now I'd like to get it back again. <laughs> because right, the expansion so fixes this... a lot of it. <laughs> Number 10, this was 20 on my uh, Luke's list, 19 on my list, The Grizzled. Mm. The Grizzled is probably my favorite card cooperative game. And card cooperative games, they probably feel a different, they feel different than just like a regular cooperative game. Um, there's a lot of good ones out there, but this one is tense. <laughs> you're sitting there with your, with your hand of cards and you're trying to, basically everybody's trying to match symbols but there's very, very limited communication around the table. You can't say what people, what, what each of you have. If you get certain kind of debuffs, especially the, that dreaded mute card, mm -hmm. you really can't talk, which is really hilarious. Um, so you're, everybody's kind of guessing what get into head in terms of the symbol matching. Um, if you match too many symbols when you're on a quote unquote mission, then the whole thing wipes and you have to shuffle it back into the deck and you have to get rid of it all again. Object is to get rid of all the cards. Good luck, especially at higher player <laughs> counts. I have won this game at three pretty regularly. Four is tough. Five is, I think, is impossible. I've yeah, never the, even come close to five. I, I, don't, uh, but yeah. I don't play this game with f five anyway. It's much, I much prefer it as a free player. Right. Yeah, and and it does have solo and two player. They, they're different games. Like They're, they're very different games because um, it doesn't have that tense communication. The, the two player does, but there's like a dummy. Um, yeah. The solo is like a, I mean, it's it's you know, like a regular solo tarot card game, you know, like an Onium or whatever it is, um, which I enjoy. I, I like it. Mm. I do like it at three. The three is the optimal count. Uh, World War II theme, uh, you're kind of, a World War One theme. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, World War One. you're kind of, you know, you're progressing through these missions. You're quote unquote going into enemy territory to accomplish something. And then after a while, you have to kind of call it and move back. And if you call it in the right time, you get to get rid of all those cards. Basically, you're trying to get rid of all your cards from turn to turn. The expansion adds quote unquote missions. So it, like every individual mission has like this extra layer of challenge that you have to do, which is very nice and thematic. Mm. There is a campaign mode coming out in the second and last oh. expansion for this. Okay. Yeah, dude. <laughs> That'd be quite good. <laughs> I'm in. I am yeah. in. Uh, this is one of my absolute favorites. And Luke as well. Even though it doesn't have it anymore, I don't know why. Well, the, the thing is, the reason I've rated it this high is because of the expansion. The original game I thought decent, but absolutely tough as nails and didn't want to play it with anything other than three players i thought four and five was just a bit too long and insanely hard and plus at the time you were literally just matching up symbols so it was quite abstracted then i got rid of it like i say i had it as a review cover and i thought yeah I'm, I'm okay with this then i played somebody else's copy when they had at your orders and you mentioned the one and two player rules they were in the expansion they i don't think the original game had them Correct. um so first you had solitaire play great there's a plus new rules for two players because the original two player rules weren't that great the new two player rules are a lot better and right. then the mission cards not only are they more thematic which is a massive plus for me but they also scale in difficulty so they tell you whether they're easy medium or complex mission cards so you can scale the difficulty to your liking by introducing certain missions and leaving certain ones out so that amount of flexibility has now elevated the game to the point where i wanted to put it at 20. If it had no expansion, it would have still made this top 100, but it would have been a lot lower. It made mm. that much of a difference. All right. So that was the Grizzled Hour number 10. Mm. So number nine is where we get to reintroduce Pandemic Legacy Season 1, <laughs> which was at number 11. Number nine is Pandemic Legacy Season 2. So very, very close. Uh, Pandemic Legacy Season 1 is my preferred one. It was my number six. Number, all the way down to number 34 for Luke. Uh, Legacy Season 2 was also my preference wow i liked yeah. them a lot more than you did uh but you yeah. uh you liked season two more than season one yeah so I mean, oh yeah. I, I like pandemic fine i mean I, I don't go crazy for pandemic um 
sort of game wise but i like the legacy aspects of them and it was hard for me to decide whether i liked one or two or whether i wanted to put them together anyway because they're essentially similar games but, i don't see I, I disagree with that well, they're very different they feel very different they do so, get to that point i mean the first right. one basically does feel like i think this is the reason why i prefer the second one because the first one does feel like pandemic with extra rules it feels like they've thrown they've given you pandemic with a bunch of expansions legacy bits great but it's kind of like yeah same board just other stuff happening and yeah season two does flip it on its head gives you a brand new map like turns the tables on how you're supposed to play it then introduces a lot of other different elements and i just i think the plot of that one i was a bit more interested in as well even though you can guess it from a mile away but mm -hmm. yeah it, it i'd like both it was sort of hmm, where do i want to put them and i think i just put the second one slightly higher on a personal preference level but no i still like the pandemic legacy games they're solid and if you like pandemic you are kidding yourself if you haven't gone and bought one by now and played <laughs> for it because there are friends of mine who are still just getting through the first one but i but i've got a few friends of mine who uh, they loved pandemic when i first showed them it so they got the game themselves i said well i gotta play the legacies so we have played through both legacies in that same group of uh four of us and you know we've enjoyed it so if there is a season three you can guarantee we'll do it again but <laughs> oh there's a season three it's yeah. already made and oh, it's, 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 it's testing right now so um QSM i prefer then, I season guess. one to season two luke is right season one is basically pandemic with a bunch of more and more expansions as it as it uh, kind of uh, um, moves on season two was started it, you know instead of like curing cubes you're actually adding cubes to the board like you have to put down cubes it's bad when there's no cubes <laughs> <laughs> um and so it, it made that little change it's just a very more open-ended experience maybe a little bit too open-ended uh we ran into some issues Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. We should have really made that disclaimer. Ahead. Although, to be fair, we're not spoiling anything. Right. Yeah, we're not spoiling anything. Uh, <laughs> we're just kind of talking generalities over here. If you, if you don't, um, we're not, we're not, we won't say any more than that. Um, I preferred the, that, that first pandemic experience. I thought it was tighter. The, the season two experience was more open. So the, that's just preference thing. Yeah. Uh, that, at the end of the day. It was a lot more open. And I, the only blemish I had with the season two one is I felt the ending was very much uh you knew spoiler spoiler yeah I'm, I'm, i'll say nothing more <laughs> right the ending was dot 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 okay so that was yeah. our number nine pandemic legacy season two um number eight so this was number 20 for me for, uh, pretty high number 11 for luke so i'll go let him uh, sing the praises oh, of it's a heavy one yeah and you have got the second edition good <laughs> that's right robinson crusoe robinson crusoe and, and yeah like I say, this game before First Martians, I still, if you put me in a room, I would probably, like I say, I would put this one, I think I did, didn't I, didn't I rate, yes, I rated this one higher than uh, First yep. Martians, but not by much, you know, and I think a lot of that mainly just comes to the theme, I find that the thematic nature of this one more preferable to, uh, what are you doing back there, <laughs> alright, oh, you're putting it away. I, I got other games here, man, am I show and tell, I gotta line that up. <laughs> Fair enough, but yeah, Robinson Crusoe had the same problems as the first edition of first martians which is for some reason nobody can design a good rule book for these games and it is a beast to teach hence i tend to play it solo but occasionally with a two player i want to play it or even three players sometimes is that four waste of time you will lose and it will take forever but yeah the theme that comes out of this game when you're just lost on you know stranded on this island you've got to do the fundamental basics of explore get food build shelter defend yourself while doing these missions it is one of the hardest games ever put to this planet <laughs> you will die in pretty much every single game usually because of the rotten weather <laughs> so much so that i have now sort of made building shelter like my first priority because that tends to be how i die you know not getting shelter up but this it's almost like a toolbox because the mechanics are the same you know you build inventions and you you go for the event decks and you read an event like you find some blueberries and then do you eat them or not and if you do you shuffle them back in the deck and then they come back saying that you've got you know horrible illness and herpes. something is that yeah <laughs> um, i wasn't going to be crude but <laughs> but the yeah you get those cool thematic elements but i love the variation of the scenarios in this i mean the first one has you just trying to light a campfire for survival then one has you trying to get out to Jenny, who's stranded on a little rock before the storm comes in. Another one is like Indiana Jones uh, Volcano Island. Another one is defending from cannibals. Another one is like, you know what? We're stranded on this island for life. Let's just build like the Swiss Family Robinson. And each one feels very, very different. Second edition up the component quality, although not much different from the first one. 
quintessentially it gave you a better rule book though mm -hmm. it's long it's still a steep learning curve it's a, almost a vertical cliff for a learning curve thank but, you ricky royal go yeah, go but, to that man's website right now uh, yeah but it's just it, it's a really good way to learn it yeah so and like i say you've got the um, i think you got it yeah and you got the watch it played on there as well so it's just you know learn it from learn it from that as well that helps but the rule book is a lot better and you can get into this just accept you're going to lose a lot <laughs> i have won i've won my last two games of this i'll admit however i have no idea if i got a rule wrong or not and i wasn't playing i think i was playing the Yes, I did win, finally, the campfire one, because it's supposed to be the first mission you learn as a training perspective, but it kills you stone dead most of the time, so it's kind of nasty. <laughs> and I won Swiss Family Robinson one. Um, I have not tried the King Kong variant, the one that you can download. I want to try that. And I haven't tried Cannibal Island yet. I've done all the rest, though, and had my rear end handed to me. But well, you are about to get more content. Uh, Robinson Crusoe Mystery Tales will be coming later this year, 2018. Mm. Uh, Voyage of the Beagle we re-released by Portal in 2019. You are not lacking for support for <laughs> Robinson Crusoe. Yeah, I mean, Voyage of the Beagle's all right, but I haven't really had a lot of time to delve into that. I've got it, but mm -hmm. I haven't really, because it takes so long to play all the other missions, I haven't really delved into the Beagle, so I'm not entirely certain why I bought it. I think I just got it really cheap, <laughs> and I'm a bit of a completionist. But yeah, right. you know, it's going to get support. Mm -hmm. All right, so that was Robinson Crusoe, our number eight. Number seven, another baby of Luke's. This is my 25. Probably should be higher, but... Yes. <laughs> <Again>. <laughs> I'm cheap. Luke is yeah. not so cheap. Teacher salary, not the perfect one. <laughs> Only this accountants Ar may play this game. <laughs> <laughs> this is Arkham Horror LCG, our number seven. This is number four on Luke's list overall. Yeah, because this one keeps tossing and turning as which one I prefer out of this one or Lord of the Rings LCG. And again... Another vault box because, again, Fantasy Flight put these stupid little tiny boxes out which you cannot hold the collection in to save your life. But mm -hmm. I've got so much space in the box that I have, even with, what, am I on the third cycle now with the Deluxe Engine? I've, I've actually, I think the review, a review of it should have already gone out by the time this airs, but the Forgotten Age. And again, just one folder, but all the cards, Arkham Horror LCG. You know, people were thinking, oh, is this Eldritch Art? Nope. The LCG for Arkham Horror, which... It keeps topping and turning as to which I prefer out of this or Lord of the Rings. But I think Lord of the Rings gets the slight edge for how more gamey it is. Mm. And for how much I like the Lord of the Rings theme. But yeah, it could be either of those two on any given moment. Because some of the problems some people have with other Arkham games is getting the narrative out. You know, Elder Sign has done better, but it's still a dice game. Some people say Eldritch Horror is too much of an adventure game. And Arkham Horror is great theme horror, but it's also a mechanical beast. So everyone looks for the balance of this. This LCG, though, gets the narrative spot on. Every single scenario that this one does is... Yeah, there's, there's some better than others, but... They are generally all good fun to play, but the cycle tells a brilliant narrative, and the best thing that this introduces, which I hope Lord of the Rings does at some point, it does it in bits, but not a lot, is story choices. The fact that you have a decision to make, whether it's at the start of a scenario, at the end, or even during a scenario, like halfway through, gives you a choice, you know, you've come across, yeah, you come across a, you know, a Aztecian warrior or something, and it's like, do you, you know, you've got a choice. Are you going to fight against her, you know, to, you know, Put, you put your dominance through or are you going to parlay with her and you know just say look we're not the enemy you know we just want to go through here and however you decide it has it affects the rest of the scenario and then you have to write in your little campaign log you know so and so hates you or so and so you know mm -hmm. find you trust you or something and you have no idea what that's going to mean until another cycle down the line where it might be well for you it might stab you in the mm -hmm. back you don't know and it allows for great replayability because i can just sort of go right i've tried this deck and I did this storyline. Whether I win or lose it, I can say, right, I'm going to try this character now, plays fundamentally different, and I'm going to make this story choice now and see what happens. So, yeah, solid artwork. It's a classic. Probably, it's, yeah, it's definitely my favorite Arkham Horror, like, Cthulhu-esque game. And it, mm -hmm. top five, it just constantly keeps battling against Lord <laughs> of the Rings for where who's going to be the highest in any given year when I do my top 100s. So. Right. Um, it's only the IP. Like everything, everything about you say about the game is great. The choose your adventureness of it, narrative, the narrative, the narrative, narrative plus mechanisms. I think Lord of the Rings 
resists theme in some way because of the how heavy it is gamer yeah. wise um you, you get into some funky stuff this one nice and open simple but still kind of challenging the deck construction isn't as heavy um it's but it's still simple, there's still yeah. some there there's still some there it's still um, there but the whole lord of the rings requires you to build a 50 card deck and have uh three cards max of each copy and that gets right. it to about as high a limit as i can manage for deck construction anything more than that like the net runners and stuff like that it's like oh my god i can't construct the deck for these arkham right. horror usually wants you to create what like a 30 card deck and only max two copies of any card the card mm -hmm. pool is getting bigger but split across five factions and that it's pretty well spaced out so that you don't get overwhelmed with choices you know, you take this particular character, you know she's a combat munchkin. So, right, I'm looking at blue cards. And there are some that are blatantly more geared towards combat and some that are more geared towards helping other multiplayer players out. So if you're playing solo, again, you don't have to choose them. And it just makes it a lot easier to build a deck. It's just the IP. Give me... Um, you're not an Arkham fan, yeah. Give me, um, I don't know, what am I, some Dresden Files or whatever. Just like, there's all sorts of IPs out there that I would do. But this game is fantastic. That's Arkham Horror LCG, our number seven. Mm. Number six. So I'm very happy that this game made it this high because it's my number one game overall. Number <laughs> one game overall. This was like in the 20s, I think 22 or 22 for Luke. 23, yeah. Pandemic, just yeah, straight I, I, old pandemic. I think her not we really pandemic got legacy, <laughs> not pandemic Iberia, not the pandemic. But they, I consider them separate games because they all do something a little bit different. Ooh, I was gonna but say I, I, I did it slightly differently, but fair enough. Mm, no, I will separate out the original <laughs> pandemic. This is my first love. This is my baby. We would have been boycotted if we hadn't put this on the list in the top twenty. Though. No. <laughs> so. This is the game that got me into co-ops in the first place when I was first getting into games. Um, and it stands up the test of time that all it is, I don't even think of it as a game. I think of it as a game engine. And so like basic pandemic, I don't play like, unless it's like a brand new group of people, which that, that's cool too. I have a game that's very simple and I can show it to a brand new group of players. If I'm going to play though, I'm going to play with purple cubes. I'm going to play with super bug. I'm going to play with, and then lose. You know, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I, I, I've played hundreds of hundreds of games between the app and the reg and this and the solo and everything else. I'm still not great at it because I'm not a great card counter. You know, I don't know when the, uh, the epidemic still surprised me. They shouldn't at this point. But... Mm, that's it. I can't card count either, so I I don't do that well at this game either. Yeah, so uh, I'm not as great as as I should be, but I love it. It has, you could do anything you want. You can make legacy out of it. You can um, tell different stories out of it. They have the historical versions of it. There's so many ways in which they can go. Classic cooperation. I don't care about alpha player. I'm not a person that cares about that. So I know it kills people, the alpha, the alphaness of the game. I don't, whatever. Just, well, just That's behave. the same with co-ops. Yeah, that's a people problem. Just behave. <laughs> <To> behave. <laughs> so, this, is, this gets me. I know this is a total sidebar, but like in a competitive game, kingmaker is a problem so like you can lose your face so bad that you end up being helping somebody else win why is that not a mm. inherent problem quote unquote in competitive games and yet alpha player yeah. is a quote unquote problem in cooperative games <laughs> I, i'm calling it bs on that <laughs> <laughs> well you got the other problem of you know the king make thing but you've also got the grudge holders you know it's like oh yeah, I, was... I i screwed you over a little bit earlier so they make it their mission in life to kill you off mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like uh... If we're not going to say any, oh, that's an inherent problem in competitive games. I don't want to hear anything about alpha player in cooperative games. Anyway, so that's real and the abstract nature of it. I don't care because uh, the abstract nature of it makes it easy to layer top stuff on top of it. So like the Pandemic Legacy engine, the Iberia engine, which is a really, really good game. Just so much good stuff over here. I'm looking forward to the historical expansions. Can't say enough. It's my favorite game of all time, Pandemic. As I say, do like it. Not as amazing as everybody else does you know mainly because the abstract thing but still in my 20s i still can't deny that if you're going to get into co-ops if you don't get this game you're missing out mm -hmm. love the legacies you have separated them out though i didn't think that when i was doing my list and that i i separated the legacies because i think they are fundamentally different maybe season one but we'll see but all the other pandemics i've pretty much sort of lumped them together into one big like you say pandemic system and just gone where would i rate all of them like in conjunction and that and I don't mind the basic game. I'd rather play it with some expansions. Wasn't the biggest fan of Rising Tide. I thought that was okay, but just a bit graphic design-wise. Mm. And the, uh, the Cthulhu one was just not needed. Seriously, why? Um, we know why. <laughs> yeah, money! <laughs> but the 
One that I have on my shelf, which uh, is in the other room, but is the Iberia one. And that's the only one I've kept, other than the Legacy ones and that. And that is the one that I will easily pull out and play, because that is basically basic Pandemic with some additional things that make it a lot better. And I even argue that it's easier to teach that one in some cases than mm. the other ones, because you've got that railroad system that you know helps you a lot. And then if you want to make it more complex, it came with two variants that enable you to make it harder anyway. Mm besides looking a lot better. So, I mean, I've ranked it this high mainly because of Iberia. Otherwise, it might have been a bit lower. But, yeah, it's a classic I, gateway co-op. I actually left Iberia off the rank because it would, probably would have landed in, like, the 20s or 30s for me. I just didn't yeah. want all my pet, my list to be full of pandemics. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I would not have separated anything other than the pandemics mm -hmm. and the legacies. That would have been it, yeah. I mean, we, we separated mm -hmm. out Pandemic the Cure, didn't we? Yeah. No, we, 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 we included that one. We included that. All right, that's it. That's further down the list. Yeah, that's but I, I just didn't me. want a whole bunch of pandemics in the list, but I love Iberia. I love the whole thing. Pandemic. Blah, 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 blah. Pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. <laughs> so, all right. Like I say, Z, <laughs> That Z, is the last right. we are going to hear Z, about pandemic on the top one. Z Garcia owes you 20 quid. <laughs> <laughs> so you get royalties when you talk about pandemic. <laughs> that is the last we are going to talk about pandemic on the list. We still have five more games to go. Mm. Uh, so this is our number five. Um, mm. So this one had the slight edge for me. It's it's kind of it's whatever. I was number nine for me, number yeah. number thirteen for Luke. Well, we get to, um, we get to this point, and literally no game out of the ones that are left were lower than fifteen on either of our lists. So we're not saying any of these are bad <laughs> at yeah, all. So we're not. We're, I think at this point we're we finally reached the point where we don't have to cribble about placement anymore. Yeah, this is <laughs> these are all super super high. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our number five it is ghost stories mm -hmm. uh so this is a uh, tower defense game kind of old at this point 2012 somewhere around there it's old but, but i think that was the golden year of games this is standard test of time i, I think mm -hmm. this if this game came out today uh, and, it, and there was no change at all it would be just it yeah. would be just as good just as popular um it's good with it's good on its own it's good with the white moon expansion uh, I happen to like Black Secret. I know that's not as popular a one, but the, just basic ghost stories. It's a tower defense game. It's cards that come out every single turn. It's ghosts that are on the cards that are like coming towards your village. Your village is made of tiles, and you, your little ninja or whatever, your monks, Dao warrior yeah. or something, monks. There you go. Uh, you're walking around these tiles. You're using them to like get these tokens to roll. You know, to to pump up your your character. You're using them to beat back the ghost and everything. It is so frantic. The best tower defense game mm. I've ever played. It is. It's, it's as hard as its reputation. It is yes. very, very <laughs> difficult to win, especially at the max player count. Four players, it is really, really hard. You have to be on a string and willing to yeah. kind of learn where, where, learn where you can lose a tile or two in order to build yourself up in order to, you know, which is something that a lot of people don't do. They're just like, you know, go and roll dice at the, at the things. They fail, and then they wonder mm. why they fail. <laughs> hmm. so but oh no ghost stories is one of my absolute favorites it's tough uh, solo it's actually easier at solo i've actually beaten it on nightmare mode with the three bosses at solo you've so, actually uh, beaten this on nightmare <laughs> uh so only solo because it's it's did whatever you only reason control like one little... solo don't you or like, what's that what did you just control one character with the solo one as opposed one to one character you have these little um tokens that represent powers of the other characters so like you you grab a token from the middle you go to the side, you do your thing, and then it go. Whenever you use that power, like let's say you use the green person's power, token goes back in the middle. You have to go get it back. I think it's a long time since I played it solo. I think I've just played it with multi ninjas or something, as opposed to right. so solo. Like, you know, it's very very beatable. Mm. Multiplayer, four players. Ugh. Yeah, multiplayer. <laughs> this is hard. And you're talking about nightmare <laughs> mode. I mean, it's hard enough to beat on normal. I can't beat it on. I haven't barely even attempted it on anything harder than the what do they call it? The induction level because that is already <laughs> stupidly hard but then you've got nightmare and hell difficulty and it's like i want to play a game because hell's just <laughs> ridiculous you know I, awesome. it's not fun if it's so hard it's downright impossible mm -hmm. the base game almost reaches that threshold but yeah wonderfully format it looks gorgeous you know tower defense it's a fun mechanic anyway 
this is definitely the best one that there is because it, it really does feel like oh, oh, get back yeah. <laughs> you know the white moon expansion helps a lot as well i don't often teach it with it because i keep forgetting the rules to it because there's a bit a lot in it but i do like the extra sort of protective effects you know you've got that goddess or whatever who pops in every now and again and the cool items mm -hmm. and some more ghosts you know i like the devourers the like werewolf type characters so I like to use White Moon. I don't own Black Secret. I watched a few reviews. I didn't think I wanted to do that whole one versus all thing. And I felt it was already complex enough with it because the rulebook could be better. <laughs> it's one of those weird rulebooks. But yeah, it's an Antoine Bowser, Antoine Bowser co-op game. What more do you want? That's right. It's so good. Uh, Ghost Stories, that is our number five. Uh, number four is an interesting kind of how it played out, a three-way tie. So it it's it scored in our little uh, point system here. It scored 19 points all three of these games. Hmm. So they're, you're basically interchangeable two, three, and four. So we'll just run through them in whatever order my computer program put it <laughs> put it in. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So this is number four. This is Flashpoint Fire Rescue. So uh... <laughs> upstage. <laughs> What are you doing with that crummy right. little box? <laughs> yeah, the rest of it is somewhere I got a thing about wood. Shelves. <laughs> so. I didn't even, like, I have everything for it. I include in the tragic events, like, little deck thing. Yep, uh, I've got that. Which was, that's one. a solid one. I have the, all the boards. There's, like, a million boards to this thing in another box. Yeah. Um, this game, like, I don't know. Like, we talk about co-ops that are good for introductory, right? Uh, co-ops that are open to different people that are not gamers that that have something for gamers and for non-gamers i think uh, why are you taunting me i'm not taunting you <laughs> not taunting you just like sorry you can carry on talking it's perfectly fine for those of us listening to the audio only luke is showing me all of his crap laid out in different games. <laughs> <laughs> i've got a thing about wooden inserts of that and like i say you talk about all the boards this became uh -huh. so problematic to store because the boards didn't fit in all the boxes so when the Broken Token did their box for it, it's like, I jumped on that bandwagon. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is not the greatest co-op game ever designed. If you don't know, it's a firefighting game. You're going in, you're, uh, you're putting out fires, and you're also rescuing people. You're going into these different rooms, and you have to go and you have to rescue, a, you know, little question mark tokens. And sometimes they're dogs and cats and kids and, you know, couples. And sometimes they're nothing, so you wasted your whole, your whole time. And, uh, but you're fighting these fires, and you have, like, fire trucks on the outside. The expansions as different different boards. You can go into like a laboratory and an airplane and all these different. There's so much different. <laughs> there's so much different uh, personality to this game. Um, there's a lot there for gamers, but if you just want to lay it out, and I've done this in therapy as well. I think I talked about this when we went over the pandemic, the cure. I'll play this game in in a therapy psychotherapy setting with people who are anxious. Get them exposed to all sorts of like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? And you know, really anxious and like. They'll do it, and then I'll be able to process with them afterwards. How did that feel? You, you, you feel? Do you feel heroic, and you got through it and everything? The fact that I can play this with like a six-year-old in therapy, and it's satisfying, and then I could scale it all the way up and put this down at a game night legitimately hmm. and have a good mechanical time with a lot of theme to it. Oh, <laughs> I can't say enough about Flashpoint. You can't. I mean, this definitely had to be... Because this was... When I first started getting into games, there were two games that struck to mind. First, Seven Wonders, because that was the first... Ignoring times during uni where I may have played other things like Citadels and one or two other sort of odd odd ends and sods you know, for board games, but didn't really know about the industry at that time. First time I went to a board game night, though, found out there was a club thing, found out it had spawned the boom of that, was four years ago, well, four or five years ago now, when I started the blog... And someone showed me Seven Wonders. That was the first game that I went, wow, okay, I need to find out more. Flashpoint Fire Rescue was the first co-op. And subsequently, the first one that I reviewed on this mm. whole channel. It was my first one. And it was, yeah, nostalgia. <laughs> but, first love. There's love, but I still love it, though. I mean, like you say, you can play the basic version. If you've got, like, kids or new people that really don't need all the extra rules, I'm more than happy just to break out the basic game. So, you know, put in the roles, but just use the basic house board. But it is great that when some people know what they're doing, or you think, oh, yeah, you can handle this, you can just throw in the apartment building, the skyscraper, you know, the subway station, all of those. And just, it's another one of those themes, a bit like when we were saying with Freedom the Underground Railroad. It's a theme everyone gravitates towards, you know, firefighters. And there's not enough games that are based on the emergency services, I've kind of realized. Mm -hmm. We need more. We need another and place game. Dog. 
As a playable dog, get the playable dog. Oh, I do love playing the dog. Yes, the dog's a good one. And that tragic thing has helped a lot, actually, because the mm-hmm. the one weakness I had were those hot spot markers that you just dotted around, mm. they littered the place, and it was really fiddly. Getting rid of those and now having the fire deck of cards adds mm. a lot of fun talkative theme moments, you know, adds more theme into the game and even some comedy moments where mm-hmm. suddenly, like, you know, you're going through and then suddenly the next point of interest, like the next uh, like victim possibility marker turns out to be this really obese bloke. <laughs> so it takes, like, more <laughs> actions to carry them out or something. And you get the others where, like, animal sounds are heard or, you get, like, massive fire things. And it works very well as a mini expansion. But, yeah, I can't say enough good about it. It's just a... It's not complicated... It's simple. You can scale the difficulty however you like, and everybody loves the theme. What else do you want from a co-op? There you go. That was Flashpoint Fire Rescue, our number 2C. I don't know. Really number four. <laughs> two C. Let's go with number four, because they're all tied. Um, okay, number three, I know I talked a lot about the uh, Arkham IP, right? Um, but Eldritch Horror is, to me, not necessarily... An Arkham game. It is. It has tentacles and it scares you and everything. But I think we <laughs> that's the criteria, lot, right? Tentacles. I see them. They're right tentacles there. means uh, Cthulhu. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> and like old timey, like Tommy guns and stuff. Mm. Um, but what this game does, we've said it a bunch of times, and you, you'll hear it a lot. This is an adventure game. It's mm. it's Indiana Jones. Like if they just like slapped Indiana Jones on here, I wouldn't even notice. And I love Indiana Jones. That's one of my favorite IPs. Um, it, it, <clears throat> it took Arkham Horror, streamlined it down. You can actually, you know, I feel like you have more agency at the end of the game. Uh, so you will get some bad roles, but there's like mitigation. There's a little bit of mitigation. There's you, different ways to like build up your roles or different ways to specialize. I felt the character balance is really good. You get a little wonky because there's a lot of content for this game. I mean, there's yeah, we're talking four big box expansions, five little box expansions. It's gotten Whoa. bloated, especially as, as you remember, I had it in that vault, you know, along yep. with all the Arkham stuff. That's why I'm letting you show and tell it this time. But <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's got a lot of content in it now to the point where it's like, yeah, this is getting bloated, but you can cherry pick a lot of the stuff you throw in expansion wise. And usually it's based on what ancient one you want to fight. I want to fight right. that big worm dude that goes through the soil, like destroys buildings. Fine, but I only need to be concerned with these elements. Right. Yeah. So I am like I'm love. I love Eldritch Horror. I'll lay it out in time. I'll just play like a regular game of Eldritch Horror. Um, I have a hard time getting the the spare board, so I stopped buying the big expansions. Uh, I only get the little ones, like the the cities of the cities of ruin. Latest that one was actually good. a solid one. Probably the best little one, besides the first one, which was just more cards, which is necessary. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, but... the the cities of ruin added like all different mechanics. They're finally starting to like explore the mechanical space in there with their expansions. Mm. It, the the adventure thing is good. The stories are good. Ugh. Mm. So good. <laughs> it's a great one. Um, cities of ruin and four second law. Yeah, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to rank which one I like best. But I've always said every time I've reviewed another expansion, you get the small ones first, then choose your cherry pick out of the big ones because the new boards are okay. But I find it's like oh god, it's more complexity, more stuff to learn. I prefer it when they don't do the boards and just give you more cards, more ancient ones, right. and some other mechanics. So cities and ruins was perfect for that. Perfect. You know, more cards, another ancient one, and that destruction mechanic that isn't complicated, but it makes a big difference. You know, all like, oh, suddenly Ro- mm-hmm. you start the game and Rome is destroyed. <laughs> it's like straight off yeah, the yeah. bat. You know, they picked on Rome, <laughs> but it right. it's an adventure game. Not the most horrific Cthulhu game ever, but exactly. yeah, you, you can't deny it. it. It streamlined it to a point. Do not play this with more than three to four players. So. Yeah, yeah. We tried to do it with eight one night. No, sir. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, a friend of mine always likes to teach it now and again, dumb. and he keeps roping in like, oh, we got like five or six, you know, do you want to play this? It's like, no. <laughs> you have, <laughs> you know, I swear he's put more people off Eldritch Horror than he has enticed people in because he keeps playing it with five or six players. It's like, don't. The inviter, the dirty old inviter. Mm. <laughs> All right, so that was our number three, Eldritch Horror. Number two, um, I love theme. I love narrative. This mm. is, as soon as I played the first scenario, instant top mm. five game personally, top five co-op, top five everything. This is we a surprise, though. I didn't think it would get this high on both our lists. Really? I didn't what, think it would get really? to, to this top five, though. I didn't think it would. I, th- I thought it'd be high. I thought we'd be doing it in the top 20, top 40. But to be number two, that was a shocker. <laughs> it's my number four overall. Hmm. Number 15 for Luke. So, you know, very high on both our 
Oh, are you serious? This game is like it's it's again a game system. Mm. Like I contend, pandemic is a game system. It does so much different stuff. That tells different stories. If you want like a rock'em sock'em, you know, let's kill a lot of things. You know, uh, let's go to Marcy Case. If you want to solve really hard puzzles, go to the the original base version. Mm. Um, the different like the last one that was released as of this recording, Australia Drive, was I thought one of the best ones. I mean, like it's seven. It's seven um, expansions in, and it's still like you know giving me different stuff. It's innovating. It's interesting. It's uh, it's very adult theme. I wish they would release some more kind of family friendly ones because I want to ah. play this with my family. <laughs> I like <laughs> those. <my> family. <laughs> I like these gritty ones. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I, I do like the gritty ones as well. Um, so many different stories. Um, the weakest part. It, it, it's not a perfect game. Uh, there's there's probably a little bit too much dice rolling for a resolution you end up kind of just rolling, rolling, rolling and doing the thing. Um, there's, I don't, I, I don't want to get too much into it because the, it, it overcomes all anything that is mechanically an issue with it because mm. of such strong narratives, such strong art, really good mysteries to solve and really good puzzles to solve. Those are two different things. Mm. It gives you mysteries and puzzles and narrative. Uh, escape rooms got nothing on this game because <laughs> escape room themes are garbage. <laughs> <laughs> We like escape room games. He's talking about theme, right? <laughs> I love escape room games, but like, oh, you are in the Amazon and you fell into a trap and you have a giant pile of astronomical puzzles next to you. Go solve it. No, no <laughs> it's dumb. This is, you are legit in stories of playing characters. You're kind of doing the quantum leap thing where you're kind of jumping into receptacles and you're living out that character's life. Mm. Takes five hours per scenario and it flies by. I never even yeah. noticed the time. Yeah, we can. That is time. Story. We kind of do it. I play it with two um, girlmates of mine uh, from the game shelf, another sort of pair on UK bloggers, and we've now got into this thing where we play it like as a free player all the time. It usually takes us about what three hours per scenario, not usually five, but it mm. de on depending on the reset. It's it's still fifteen. I still really like it. However, there's a strong caveat with this. I've enjoyed it a lot at the start, very much at the start. The original scenario I still think is the best one by far. That one mm. really sold me on the system. Liked Marcy Case. Didn't like Prophecy. Egyptian one was okay. Loved Endurance. I thought that was a good one. The Arctic one, especially the way it started. Um, wasn't a fan of the... What was it called? The Medieval one at all? The, the Crusades? One. Yeah. I didn't, Lumen Fide. I didn't like that one very much at all. I felt that mm -hmm. was so combat heavy. And I liked Estrella Drive. I thought Estrella Drive was quite cool as well. But Time Stories is on a tightrope at the moment. I still love it, and I still think it's a fantastic co-op, but they have got to get back to its roots because they've had this <laughs> overarching plot for a while that they've been mm. letting aside for ages. They're leaving it behind, and mm. it takes ages for them to release a new scenario. They need to get back to that overarching plot because that's one of the best things of it, and they need to start doing more timey-wimey weird stuff with it. I mean, mm -hmm. not spoiling anything, but the start of the Endurance uh, module... I thought was brilliant the way that was handled in the sort of timey wimey thing fashion it did. And you don't often see that around. I need them to start going back to the whole fact that this is a sci-fi. You know, not just because you put it in medieval times doesn't make it a fantasy game. You know, keep to the sci-fi, do more time weirdness, bring back more puzzles, <laughs> because we don't seem to be getting as many of those, and less of the combat. That's what I'm a bit worried about at the moment. They're, stri they're going down a lot down the combat route. And you mentioned about rolling mm -hmm. dice. Well, that's what it is. Yeah, exactly. So it's hit and miss with the scenarios. But when they... I don't find a scenario bad. I go, no, I didn't enjoy that game. I still enjoy it, hence I'm ranking it highly. But when they get it right, when they get a scenario perfect, yeah, I'm, that's like one of the best three-hour experiences I can get for a co-op. See, it's funny. Um, in terms of the diversity of opinion, Prophecy of Dragons was, was like my favorite scenario. And, and Expedition Endurance was my least favorite scenario. Yeah, everyone... Entirely flipped from you. We're, we, we don't have to get into that. Maybe we'll do like a separate thing on Time Stories. <laughs> Full spoiler, whatever. That but be a good podcast, it's funny actually. how like we, yeah. can have such, we can have such a different opinion and it's still the same game and we still love the experience. So mm. um, that was our number two. That was Time Stories. Mm. So we have arrived at our number one. If you are a follower of The Broken Meeple, you know exactly... <laughs> I... What game landed at number one? I tried. <laughs> you I tried. tried to get rid of it. <laughs> I tried to kind of. It, it... <laughs> I can't believe this got to number one. I mean, people are going to cry foul at this one so game. bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think Luke Hector and the designer of the game are the only two people 
who have this game as their number one co-op of all time and number one, number one game. game of all time yeah this is what like what are we talking about people <laughs> oh so what are we talking about oh sentinels of the multiverse and oh, the... hold on a sec whoa, 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 whoa. you only got the one box hold on a sec here we go Yeah, don't even try that. <laughs> have I only got the one box? <laughs> so, I have got all. I have got three boxes. I have got your Rook City and Infernal Relics. I've got the original, and I don't have the Vengeance box anymore because it all fits into three boxes now. And I bought this one, which takes Vengeance and just makes it ridiculous. Right. And the amount I have spent on that Oblivion Kickstarter was ridiculous oh, i went where are you oblivion <laughs> it's coming it is coming they're almost done but they, i want yes. them to make it right i need this game system to work with this whole massive battle and you know with the whole pretty much copying the infinity war thing i love the new cards that they're coming out with you know especially after the ones that i've got promo falls for and i want that box i need that collector's box to work because it will just be a great <laughs> storage system but i went mm -hmm. mad i bought like the sign copies and like canvas print as well i want that on my wall on my gaming wall i just went mad for this but yeah i can't say <laughs> i think people have heard me rave about this all the time the ultimate superhero co-op you know you, mm -hmm. we've said marvel legendary we've said those ones which are based on ips this is not based on an ip this is totally original heroes even though they are parodying a lot of dc and things i mean you've got bunker who's basically iron man you know legacy who's basically superman and stuff like that but they're the original they were and the others were deck builders this gives you your own deck so you know you take your team of four superheroes you go up against one villain and you you fight in an environment everything has a deck the villain deck the environment deck and each hero with their own deck you don't deck build it it's pre-built for your character so i'm playing you know the yeah, I'm playing Bunker or something, and I have a deck that gives me loads of different gun modes and the like shields and drawing cards. If I play Ra, the Sun God or something, then I am just burning everything in sight. Each of the heroes has got their own way to play, their own style, their own complexity level. So I can say, oh, you're a complete beginner at this. Right, tell me your favorite superhero. They go, the Flash. Right, fine, Tachyon. Here you go. There's your, there's your deck. And it just works perfectly, but... No other co-op game makes me feel like a proper team, proper superhero team than Sentinels does because you cannot have a Lone Ranger. You have to work together. Some of those villains are stupidly hard and I get what you're saying because you mentioned Zeon's End um, with the tracking. You do have a lot to track in this game. It's the a... most. It is horrible when it comes to the tracking. <laughs> it is. And so, and they have an app to help you with the tracking, and pff, who cares? It, <laughs> it, it, yeah. I mean, the app kind of helps with the tracking, but definitely the... Yeah, definitely it takes a little bit. You know, I've played the game so much now, either via... I mean, the app for this is brilliant. The actual proper video game one, absolutely brilliant. Um, with, like, a soundtrack and animations and everything. But even just playing the card game, you know, you can use the hit point tokens, but you just use the app to control, like, who's got the highest and lowest and whatever. It takes a bit of learning. I've just gotten used to it, so I do not deny that this isn't for everybody, and it has a slight barrier to entry for the tracking. But it also depends on which boss you're fighting. You fight the easier bosses, it's not that difficult to track what they're doing. You play some of the expansion bosses, they get harder, but by then, you're used to the game. <laughs> And the environments. I think the environments cause more tracking than the bosses. Possibly, yeah. But I do like the way that they completely change the face of the game. It's like it's very much different for me to do a thematic game of like I'm going to fight the chairman, gangland boss in Rook City. It's more thematic. But then you chop and change it. It's like right now we're somehow fighting on you know in a prison dinosaur block island, yeah. or dinosaur <laughs> island or something like that. And suddenly it's like okay, first off, how did they get here? But <laughs> secondly, you you just have it and combinations variety everyone complains about the artwork why okay yeah it's not super photo realistic it's meant to look like a comic strip it does that it looks mm -hmm. just like something you know like a 10 year old would get in the 1950s or something comic strip and just can't get enough of it i love superheroes mm -hmm. as a theme that helps as an ip but i just cannot say enough good things about sentinels of the multiverse not for everybody and i know a few people locally that hate the game yep. with a passion it's gonna happen mm -hmm. but uh this one hit number one 
and Gloomhaven. It's, it, it's the track. <laughs> game, the, the game has massive warts. Like it, it's a lot mm. to track. It's a lot of you know when you have this game laid out. <clears throat> excuse me. It's a lot of table space just for a quote unquote card game because uh, there's tokens and there's all sorts of stuff over there and there's all sorts of things to you know this person's immune. This that person's immune. I said it was great for Aeon then to not have that. Um, yes, this is here and it's it's hard for me to get this game out to the table. It's very niche in terms of the people that I can play it with. But what Luke was saying about no game makes me feel immersed in a awesome theme with mechanical kind of stuff. Like I can, I feel smart with the combos and everything. So like when I pull off a cool combo and I do 45 damage in a turn and it's so satisfying. It is not the number one co-op ever, but mm. heck with it. Yeah, we, we love <laughs> it, it enough. It deserves and... to be up here. Well, well, yeah. um, and I want to give a special shout out. This box is actually not full of official content. Uh, this is um, Matthew Bishop is uh, did the fan expansion called The Cauldron. This is about, I don't know, 16 different heroes, uh, seven different villains, and some environments over there. Mm-hmm. Brand new, just all different decks in this. If you go on the Sentinels of Multiverse forum, there are tons of people that make tons of custom stuff for it. So it, 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 you are not lacking. Mm. You are not lacking for content. That is where game. I've drawn the line, actually. I've, I've not actually delved into the Cauldron stuff, mainly because I don't tend to go for a lot of fan-made content anyway. And it's not like I haven't got more combinations in this box to use right. anyway. It's enough <laughs> in there as it is. But definitely got I those played it enough. I played it enough where I reached out and I I tried it. It's it is top notch stuff. I I can really recommend the Cauldron. And it got blessed, quote unquote, blessed by Chris Bedell, Christopher yeah, Bedell. He, sorry he, about that. Yeah, but he liked it. Uh, he he liked it and he said, okay, um, well, you know, uh, go ahead and do this on Printer Studio. I think it is, and you know, we we'll, won't we'll bother you or anything. So it, if he says that their decks are working, they're good. I'm I'm good with that too. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So that was our number one game, Sentinels of Multiverse. That was validation. One... <laughs> That was 100 co-ops. Ish. Um, so, what we? I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough of you. <laughs> you know, I love winding you up with that. <laughs> I make it easy. I know. <laughs> that was 100 co-ops. Um, we really hope you enjoyed all of that content. We really hope that you have found uh, your next favorite co-op game somewhere on this list. Uh, we will be producing another video at some point. Uh, with our games that not make the list, so like there's even more co-ops that will just be kind of floating out there. You will not lack for co-op fun. Uh, Luke, this was a ton of laughs. This was a ton of hours. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, it as well. it's, uh, but I had a really great time. Thank you for um, uh, coming up to bat. Uh, not a lot of content creators out there could make pull off a, a top 100 list, so uh, this was great. Yeah, this is. I always love these top 100 lists. I mean, I've been doing my top 100 now for the last three years. It's popular. People like it. I love doing it. It's a ton of work. <laughs> you know, this one was as well because we got a sync up not only – time to edit the videos but also the fact that we have different uh you know time zones in particular so you know it's was it now uh you know 7 40 here in the evening it's still bright outside mm-hmm. it's still like early afternoon for <laughs> for them mm-hmm. and half the time i'm doing it at what like one o'clock two o'clock in the afternoon it's still like morning for you so it's still yep, i'm just pain. waking up <laughs> I'm just roll out of the bed. But uh, yeah, yeah this... but, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please, please comment, reach out to us. I am at ENGN underscore podcast. Luke, you are at? At The Broken Meeple. Literally write it out as that. You can find me on Facebook. Find the YouTube yep. channel, brokenmeeple.blogspot.com for the actual blog. Trust me, you, you just do a Google search. You'll find me in some yep. channel or another. Same thing here. Every night is gamenight.com. Uh, this is Jason uh, with Luke signing off. We hope you enjoyed it. See you guys around. Take care, guys. All right. Oh. Woo! We did it! Yes! Yes! Now go away! <laughs> <laughs>